Princess Diana died in a tragic car crash in 1997 but the forensic pathologist who studied the extent of her injuries claimed in normal circumstances the injuries would not have proved life-threatening. The late princess suffered a small punctured vein in her lung in the crash, but forensic pathologist Dr. Richard Shepard said she could have easily survived if circumstances were different. Dr. Shepard said Diana's injury was just in the wrong place and if she was hit at a different angle, or with slightly less force, she would not have died. Writing in the Daily Mail, he said, Diana's was a very small injury, but in the wrong place. Diana's death is a classic example of the way we say, after almost every death, if only, if only she had hit the seat in front at a slightly different angle, if only she had been thrown forward 10 miles per hour more slowly, if only she had been put in an ambulance immediately. But the biggest if only, in Diana's case, was within her own control. If Princess Diana was wearing a seat belt at the time, there was a high chance she would not have died in the crash, Dr. Shepard said. He added, if only she had been wearing a seat belt. Had she been restrained, she would probably have appeared in public two days later with a black eye. Perhaps a bit breathless from the fractured ribs and with a broken arm in a sling. The pathology of her death is, I believe, indisputable. But around that tiny, fatal tear in a pulmonary vein are woven many other facts, some of which are sufficiently opaque to allow a multitude of theories to blossom. The late princess did not suffer many injuries in the crash apart from a few broken bones and a small chest injury, but it was a tiny punctured vein in her lungs that killed her. In 2004, UK's top forensic pathologist Dr Richard Shepard was called to give evidence for Operation Paget, a major inquiry involving Princess Diana's death. The police inquiry was led by Sir John Stevens in a bid to debunk the various conspiracy theories surrounding Diana's death. Following the crash, Diana was able to communicate with emergency services after the crash, but lost consciousness in the ambulance and suffered a cardiac arrest. Doctors soon realized she had a punctured vein in her lungs, and Diana underwent a major operation but ended up dying in surgery. Speaking about her injury, Dr. Shepard said, Veins, of course, are not subject to the same high pressure pumping as arteries. They bleed much more slowly. In fact, they bleed so slowly that identifying the problem is hard enough, and, if it is identified, repairing it is even harder. Her specific injury is so rare that in my entire career I don't believe I've seen another. There were four victims in the accident, driver Henri Paul, Diana, her boyfriend Dodie Fade, and bodyguard Trevor Rees Jones who was seated next to the driver and in front of the princess. Mr. Rhys Jones was the only survivor in the crash, and was the only one wearing his seat belt. Dr. Shepard said Diana's position in the car made her less vulnerable than the other passengers, who ended up absorbing more force from the crash. Speaking about the accident, Dr. Shepard wrote in the Daily Mail, Diana was slightly more fortunate because their bodyguard, Trevor Rhys Jones, was sitting in front of her and he was strapped in. She was much lighter than Dodie and Reese Jones's belt would have absorbed some of the extra force. This slightly lessened the energy of the impact for her. Princess Diana died in a car crash at the Pont de la Road tunnel in Paris, France, 1997. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry have finally moved into Frogmore Cottage following its pound 3 million revamp, and pal Victoria Beckham is helping spruce it up, and instead of adorning the walls with expensive artwork, former Suits actor Meghan has shipped over posters from her former bachelorette pad in Toronto. Sounds a bit like my old student digs. I'm told she has been swapping interior design tips with pal Vic, 44 who came to their wedding. It was previously reported that the Grange 2 listed property was being designed by the mastermind of Soho House's rustic look, Vicky Charles, but sources close to the couple insist that is not that case. One explains, Harry and Meghan want to make Frogmore as homely as possible and Meghan has brought over a lot of posters she used to have at her apartment in Toronto when she was filming suits. She had a lot of memories in that home and wants to bring some of them to her new pad. She has also been talking to Victoria Beckham a lot about their design ideas. 
People thought Vicky Charles had been hired to transform but actually that's not the case. It was the wrong Victoria. Meghan, who is expected to give birth this month, has also made sure that framed pictures of family and friends are dotted round. The property was previously used as accommodation for royal household staff. The Sussexes had their engagement photos taken in front of Frogmore House on the estate, where they also held their evening wedding reception after they got married last year. Despite its expensive transformation, the cottage was originally listed in Queen Charlotte's 1801 accounts for her garden as having been built for £450. Queen Victoria had breakfast at the cottage on 28 June 1875, and said there were an immense number of frogs which she found quite disgusting. Brilliant. Meghan Markle the Duchess of Sussex was forced to swiftly delete an Instagram post on her newly minted account after noticing an unfortunate cropping error. The mistake was pointed out by royal blogger, Gertz Royals. Tweeting, the royal commentator observed, Sussex Royal deleted their original post and made an almost identical one. They removed the repetitive last line and swapped the photo of the quote as the original photo they had posted did not include the full quote. The original photo posted by the Duke and Duchess included a graffiti mural of former South African President Nelson Mandela's face alongside a quote from his famous autobiography. Walk to Freedom. However an amended image cropped out the South African anti-apartheid revolutionary's face in order to show the words in the quote more clearly, of the change, a tweet on the Gertz Royal Twitter account said, the photo from Sussex Royal original post on the lunchbox fund versus the second posting. I assume the change was to include the full quote not to crop the picture of Nelson Mandela ad in particular. Harry and Meghan have spoken very highly of him and visited an exhibit on him in 2018. The Sussex Royal Instagram post was made as a plea to those wishing to give baby gifts to the couple who are expecting their first child to be born any day now, with heavily pregnant Meghan having now moved into her new Frogmore abode with husband Harry after extensive renovation work was carried out there. The photo's amended caption said, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are so grateful for the well wishes in anticipation of their firstborn. Today we introduce you to one of four charities the couple has asked that you consider supporting in lieu of sending gifts. Please meet the Lunchbox Fund provides a nutritious daily school meal to children in South Africa who would otherwise go hungry. Since its inception, the Lunchbox Fund has provided over 20 million meals to school children in need. Royal fans are obsessed with the new social media account, which broke a record for amassing 1 million followers faster than any other. The account currently has 4.2 million followers and that number is expected to grow. The Sussexes plan to use the account as a way of directly contacting their followers after they formally divided their royal household from Kate. The Duchess of Cambridge and Prince William after relocating to Frogmore from Kensington Palace. In their first post, Harry and Meghan said, Welcome to our official Instagram, we look forward to sharing the work that drives us, the causes we support, important announcements, and the opportunity to shine a light on key issues. We thank you for your support, and welcome you to Sussex Royal. Prince Harry and Buckingham Palace were yesterday said to be incensed over reports that the Queen has banned Meghan from wearing jewellery from the royal collection. Royal sources said there was a great deal of anger over the claims which were simply untrue. And they pointed out that the Queen had already loaned the Duchess of Sussex jewellery for her wedding. Meghan, who is due to give birth to the couple's first child in the next few weeks has also worn earrings provided by the monarch. There is anger that these claims circulating are simply not true, a source said. They are rightly incensed. Another royal insider added, it is worth noting that the Queen lent Meghan a tiara for the wedding, gave her earrings for her first royal engagement, and had just agreed to partly fund her new household. The insider added that Meghan simply had not attended any major events recently. The jewellery in question is only usually worn at extremely special functions or state occasions and there simply haven't been many of those since Meghan became a member of the royal family, the source said.
The claims simply aren't true. The anger came after a palace insider alleged some priceless items in the royal collection, loaned at the discretion of the Queen, would not be made available to Meghan. The monarch was reportedly left unimpressed by Meghan's demanding behavior ahead of her marriage to Harry last year, during which the prince is reported to have told staff, what Meghan wants Meghan gets. And the insider claimed that the palace had applied the new rules to Meghan in a bid to maintain order hierarchy and precedence within the royal family. It is true that Buckingham Palace did not want all the items in the royal collection to be opened up to Meghan at this time. The insider said. Obviously Kate as the next Princess of Wales and a senior member of the family does have them made available to her. That's not to say items won't be loaned to Meghan in the future if situations change. Last month, it emerged that the Prince of Wales told the Duchess of Sussex not to wear a tiara to her first overseas state dinner. Meghan had hoped to borrow a jeweled tiara from the royal collection but she was advised by her father-in-law that such ostentation is avoided in parts of the Commonwealth where it can be seen as reminiscent of a bygone era or extravagant. Buckingham Palace said, We have no comment to make. <laughs>